Thanks for tuning in. Ham Talk Live will be on the air shortly. Please stand by. Thanks for tuning in. Ham Talk Live will be on the air shortly. Please stand by. This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you by Tower Electronics. For connectors, cables, and more, call 920-435-2973 or visit pl-259.com. And by the Ham Station. Get your new radio or antenna by calling 800-729-4373 or go to hamstation.com. It's Ham Radio. Everyone, it's time for another edition of Ham Talk Live. It's episode number 34, School Club Roundup with Lou Malchik. Into our queue. Recorded live on Thursday, October 6, 2016. I'm your host, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ham Talk Live. Tonight we'll be joined by School Club Roundup leader Lou Malchik. Into our queue and how you can talk to schools during a very special week. And we'll take your calls live in just a few minutes. Last week, Ralph Fedor, K0IR, was here to talk about the upcoming Bouvet Island de-expedition. If you missed the show, you can listen anytime. Just go to hamtalklive.com. Um, you can also download it on a podcasting app. Uh, through a service like iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, SoundCloud, or you can even catch us over on YouTube. Uh, tonight, we're talking about some operating activities that are open to everyone. Uh, we have several. So first, uh, a few quick reminders. Coming up this weekend on the air, it's the 100 watts and a wire fallout. Get outside if you can with 100 watts or less and get on the air. Details are at 100wattsandawire.com and on Ham Talk Live, episode number 32. And uh, we've posted a list of all of the frequencies uh, that are being used for the hurricane nets on our Facebook page and Twitter feed this afternoon. Uh, make sure you stay away from those frequencies during the fallout or any other uh, operating. Of course, the main ones are 14.325 and 7.268. Uh, but the complete list is up there. Um, uh, the AWRL compiled that, and we uh, retweeted that and, and sent that out on Facebook. So be sure to check that out and try to stay away from those locations. Um, also, before we go to break, want to remind you that uh, Joda is coming up, the Jamboree on the Air. Uh, that's coming up here um, next weekend, so uh, don't forget about that. And also... Uh, don't forget, you have a chance to work the set of Last Man Standing on Tuesday. Special guests Amy and Ed Woodrick. Uh, that's KE4IKF and WA4YIH. They'll be visiting the Last Man Standing show. They'll be on D-Star Reflector 30 Charlie from the Mike Baxter office set on the Last Man Standing stage in Studio City, California. Uh, the show usually operates from the set. They shoot every Tuesday night, and so during the dinner break, they get on the air. Uh, usually about 2245 UTC for an hour, so be sure you give them a call. Well, tonight during the show, we're going to be talking about yet another operating opportunity for everyone. It's called School Club Roundup. Uh, get you all your questions ready to go. After the interview, you can call us. Um, at our phone number, it's 812-NET-HAM-1. That's 812-638-4261. 
Uh, you can also call us on Skype. The username there is Ham Talk Live. Um, you can also send us a question via Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at Ham Talk Live. Um, there's also a uh, comment section uh, on the website if you're listening live. Uh, you can post a comment in there um, and a question in the comment section as well. I'll be right back with Lou into our queue right after this word from Tower Electronics right here on Ham Talk Live. This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you by Tower Electronics. Tower Electronics has been the Ham's dime store since 1978, bringing connectors, antennas, cables, and other parts to the world. Scott and Jill travel the country bringing their store to you at HamFest, but you can also order online at pl-259.com or by calling 920-435-2973. Stock up on those supplies like PL259 and end connectors, audio cables, mobile antennas, and ham sticks. Their silver-plated end connectors are even in use on the International Space Station. Tower Electronics is a dealer for MFJ, Comet, Daiwa, OPEC, Workman, and Ham Pro Technologies. Tower Electronics, online at pl-259.com, proud to sponsor this episode of Ham Talk Live. Your host, Neil Rapp, would tell you a chemistry joke, but he probably wouldn't get a reaction. Now, more Ham Talk Live. And we're back. I'd like to thank Scott and Jill at Tower Electronics for sponsoring the show once again tonight to help bring you Ham Talk Live. They were supposed to be at the Melbourne, Florida Ham Fest this weekend, but there's this thing called Hurricane Matthew, and um, they had to postpone that. So the Ham Fest has been postponed to October 21st and 22nd. Um, so instead, uh, Scott and Jill will be at the LaGrange, Georgia Ham Fest on Saturday, uh, and then they will resume their normal schedule. They'll be in Greenville, Tennessee on October 15th and then Chattanooga, Tennessee, on October 21st and 22nd. Of course, you can do what I did this week. You can give them a call at 920-435-2973 or visit their website at pl-259.com and uh, order whatever you need. I got some jumper cables and a DC cord to get ready for uh, this weekend and some projects uh, that we're working on at school. And uh, so give them a call. Tell them you heard it on Ham Talk Live. Ham Talk Live is on the air every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time right here on HamTalkLive.com. And if you miss the show, be sure to check out the archive on the website or download it from one of those podcasting things. Uh, Lou Malchik into our queue is the amateur radio club advisor and former chemistry teacher at Brooklyn Technical High School. Lou was first licensed in 1959 as WV2FBX while in eighth grade. He's a past president of the Erasmus Hall High School Amateur Radio Club and the Brooklyn College Amateur Radio Society. He was the faculty advisor at Brooklyn Tech, W2CXN, from 1977 through 2003. He has administered the school club roundup since its inception more than 30 years ago. Lou is a VE, has taught classes and mentored students mostly at Brooklyn Tech. He's a life member of ARRL and QCWA. He's active in Aries. He's a Hudson Division Assistant Director and also served more than 30 years in Army Mars. He's the co-chairman of the Education Committee and a director of the Long Island Mobile Amateur Radio Club, or LIMARC, uh, which sponsors the event in cooperation with the ARRL. In 2005, he was awarded the Grand Ole Ham Award from the ARRL Hudson Division, and Lou has also received an award from the American Chemical Society chapter in his area for his many years of work at Brooklyn Tech with chemical education and safety. And since Lou and I both have teaching uh, chemistry and sponsoring high school ham radio clubs in common, I cannot be responsible for any bad chemistry jokes that may occur throughout this broadcast because all the good ones are gone. Right, Lou? Right. 
<laughs> we were swapping chemistry jokes before the show. So here we go, Lou. Welcome to Ham Talk Live. Thanks for coming on. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, tell us a little bit about School Club Roundup. Tell us uh, when it is and how that got started. Okay, well, I'll start with uh, uh, how it got started, really. Um, the upcoming session this month uh, will be the 41st session of the School Club Roundup. Uh, it did not start uh, quite that long ago. Uh, it started in either 1985 or 86. And uh, if you think about it, uh, our late uh, colleague, uh, Marty Smith, KA2NRR, uh, came up with this idea, and uh, it really fit. Uh, we constantly tell our children, do not talk to strangers. And then we put them on the radio and say, now talk to strangers. Uh, there's a, a basic conflict there. And Marty came up with the idea of having a straightforward exchange. It was inspired by the old novice roundup, and uh, we made it so that it runs from Monday morning through Friday evening for an entire week, uh, so that it's running during school uh, during the school week. And uh, the next session begins uh, uh, Monday morning, the seventeenth of October, and runs through the twenty uh, third. Uh, no, it's the 21st, right? 21st, <laughs> yes, 21st. Um, and um, one of the things that uh, we found is that, uh, well, we used to run it in February only. And by popular demand and a great deal of uh, resistance that had to be overcome from me, uh, we added a second one. Uh, it's rather the time consuming to take care of the uh, the uh, logs and checking and stuff like that uh, but we added the October session and now they are both popular um, and uh, so we're looking forward to it well looking to having everyone come on Go yeah ahead. we've uh We've participated in it for quite a while now, and um, we've, we've done both the uh, October Roundup and the February Roundup, and it's always one of the highlights of our year. Um, so it's it's always great to have a way to get the kids on the air where everything is is kind of scripted. It, it's kind of a contest format, although we'll we'll talk a little bit about that whether it's truly a contest or or not, and on. I know what your answer is already, but we'll talk about it. Uh, but it, it's a scripted, predictable way um, to get kids on the air and get them over some of that mic fright. And um, so it, it's worked out really well for us. Um, and I know that there's a lot of other schools out there that, that feel the same way. So... We want to get more schools involved in this, of course, but we realize that most of the people listening tonight probably aren't associated with a school. So tell the folks out there listening how they can get involved with School Club Roundup and support what these kids are doing, um, even if they're not a part of a school club or sponsoring one of those. Okay. The uh, uh, first of all, I just want to correct something in the uh, intro. Um, although I retired in 2003 from Brooklyn Tech, I have still been the advisor and or trustee there to this day. Um, and uh, so we're, we're getting ready now. Uh, but, but the whole idea is there aren't that many school stations out there. And for the kids to get on the air and make contacts during the week, uh, there have to be other stations that they can work. And uh, so that's where individual stations, other non-school club stations, uh, anyone can make contacts. As a matter of fact, anyone can make contacts with anyone. Uh, it's just that the scoring is different. There's, there's a, uh, if you're familiar with contest-style scoring, 
you have uh, points for each contact. Uh, phone is one point, and uh, CW and digital modes are two points each. Uh, and then there are multipliers. A uh, multiplier for a school contact is five. The multiplier for a non-school club is two. And uh, then there are multipliers for states and uh, Canadian provinces and territories and for DX entities. Uh, and so it, it gets to be uh, rather fun competing. And I know uh, Neil uh, uh, finds that it's more of a, a competitive piece. Uh, and what I have to tone people down on is uh, you don't have to be competitive. Uh, if you want to be, you don't have to be competitive with anyone but yourself. Um, I have, uh, I, I'm fond of saying, you know, there's only one station uh, that has been in every one of the previous 40 sessions of the School Club Roundup, and that is W2CXN at Brooklyn Tech. And there's only one operator who has been in all of the sessions, and that's me. <laughs> uh, not that I have been competitive most of the time, nor has Brooklyn Tech been competitive most of the time. We operate with a very modest station. We once had a very uh, good station, but because of changes in the building and things like that, uh, we are now running uh, a 100-watt radio into a mobile whip, and uh, whatever resonance we can get out of that system, that's it. Um, and um, it, it's sometimes quite challenging, but we get the kids on the air, and they have fun. Uh, and talk about Mike Fright. Uh, I actually had a kid operating, uh, not in the roundup, but just operating, uh, with an old uh, D star, uh, um, grip, uh, you know, I'm trying to remember, the, the G stand, that's what it is, the old static uh, D104. Yeah. Uh, and he made a contact. And got so excited that he could not release the, the uh, push to talk. I literally had to pry his fingers <laughs> loose. And yeah. so this is something that I have not seen happen in the roundup. It really makes it uh, very easy to do. Uh, we have different levels of uh, categories for the different schools, so they're not mismatched. We have elementary, middle school, high school, and college university. We also separate DX from domestic uh, stations. Uh, but again, anyone may participate. We have had entries from uh, six continents um, and um, really, you know, interesting experiences. And, you know, getting back to the, the contest thing and whether it's a contest and whether it's not, and and I always kind of chuckled whenever you'd say, well, it's like field day. It, it, you know, it, it's not a contest. And I'm sitting here thinking, wait a minute, field day is a contest. And so it's really both. It, it, it's a chance that you can contest if you're competitive, which which my high schoolers, they're all about it. I mean, they they formed a rivalry against another school that I won't mention on the air, but they they they're always gunning for them, and, and they 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 want to beat them, and, and they want to get in there, and they want to you know rack up the score, and, and that's that's what they want to do. They want to see how many they can get and, and how well they can do. But there's other schools that are out there just to get kids on the air and, and get them talking. And so it, it's really great that it's both. Um, it, it's competitive if you want it to be, and it's not competitive if you don't want it to be. Absolutely. And, and I've seen plenty of field day operations that are not competitive. Oh, yeah. Awful lot of fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's always, you know, kind of a, 
the thing, you know, is it or isn't it? And, and, and I guess the answer to field day really is it's both. I mean, it, it can be, um, and some people do that and, and some people, you know, tend to just, you know, Hey, let's have a good time and let's set up and operate and see what we get. Um, One of the things that uh, I've been asked recently is uh, from new people, you know, how do we, what do we have to do to enter? Uh, just this week, I had an email from somebody uh, from a homeschool. And the question was, uh, are you going to have a category for homeschools? Uh, I don't foresee a category for homeschools, but we've accepted entries from homeschools for decades. Um, all we ask is uh, put yourself in the category that corresponds to one of the school levels. And uh, usually if you have uh, multiple grade level equivalents, uh, you pick the highest grade level of the operators. Uh, so uh, if somebody's equivalent to eighth grade, so, you know, they'd maybe be or seventh grade or something like that. Maybe it'd be at middle school level level. Uh, somebody a little higher, high school level, uh, it all works. Um, and what we've seen a, an upsurge in the last uh, couple of years uh, is colleges and universities uh, coming in in greater numbers than they used to. And uh, from what I understand, um, the ARRL is now um, involved in sponsoring a push to revitalize uh college radio clubs absolutely and, um i love having it uh i use it by the way having the colleges on there i use it to try and uh point out to the school administration um that it's a worthwhile activity otherwise why would all these big name schools uh that we want our students to aspire to uh, be sponsoring them um, so I use that as a as a selling point. Uh, I also have uh, uh, at least one student uh, who I refer to as my mentor, um, and uh, he uh, got an ARRL scholarship, and he's doing very well. So uh, there you go. Well, you know, we've had a lot of kids from here get scholarships too, and, and they've done really well, and School Club Roundup's been an important part of that, and, and so we can't thank you and uh, your crew enough, and uh, of course, Marty, when he was uh, around to uh, start it and, and help out with it, uh, we worked him several times in the Roundup, and uh, just uh, can't thank you all enough for providing that opportunity. And, and let me tell you, as a high school teacher, I'm I'm glad that I'm in the high school division because that middle school division is fierce. I mean, whew, I, it, just, it just blows my mind how in the world these middle schools, oh, the, the competition is, is up at the top is just is totally fierce. You're right. It's it's amazing. But, you know, there's one thing that uh, you bring to mind. Um, we have seen a problem, uh, not just with uh, radio clubs, but just in general. But the radio clubs in particular, almost always a school club is tied to an individual operator who is the advisor or sponsor of the club. And... Year after year, we hear of uh, teachers or other staff people who were sponsoring the club retiring and not being able to find someone to pick it up afterward. And I'd like to put this out here. Uh, you don't have to be a staff person at a school to operate in the roundup from a school. Uh, I've been telling people this for a long time. Uh, if you are a parent or uh, even a friend of somebody who works in the school and you can develop some kind of a relationship, 
it doesn't matter what kind of an operation you have. You can set up a temporary station uh, in the school parking lot, you know, operate from the mobile or something like that. Uh, anything uh, to get on the air. Uh, and um, you may have seen, uh, um, oh boy, uh, Jay, uh, who's the trustee for uh, K3FBI. Uh, there was an email from him today that was posted that he's fully retired now. But I remember the first time he entered uh, the school club roundup from Virginia, and it wasn't from K3FBI. Uh, it was from his own station. I can't remember the call sign now. Uh, but he was operating as a parent at his daughter's school. And he did that for a few years. Um, nobody says you have to be on from Monday through Friday. Some people just get on one day. And uh, there is a limit, by the way, of uh, 24 hours maximum operation and also a maximum of six hours uh, per day. So, um, you know, it's not, it's not a super marathon. Well, that's, that's some great ideas on how um, schools can get on the air, and we do need to take a break. But real quick, uh, some, some comments about how schools should go about getting involved if they want to participate in this um, coming up here in, in just a couple of weeks. Uh, well, the uh, ARRL uh, website is featuring School Club Roundup on the homepage. Uh, I think that's probably the best place to uh, to look. Uh, if you want to contact us at Limark, uh, we have a, an email address that is scr at limark.org. Limark is Long Island Mobile Amateur Radio Club. It's just the initials. And... Um, that comes to me and uh, to at least one other member of our committee. Um, we also have a Yahoo group that is SCR L, uh, Sierra Charlie Romeo Lima at uh, yahoogroups.com. And uh, both of those are excellent ways of, uh, uh, especially the Yahoo group for uh, getting in touch with the other people. Yep, very good. We do that uh, quite a bit and always some uh, lively conversation on there around this time of year. So uh, check those out. Again, that's scr at limark.org and scr-l on Yahoo Groups. Well, we're going to take a break. We'll be back and we're going to take your calls live. Uh, with Lou right after this word from the ham station right here on Ham Talk Live. This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you by the Ham Station. For 35 years, the Ham Station has brought new and used radios, antennas, accessories, and equipment to the amateur radio community. Give Jeff or Dan a call at 1 800 729 4373 or order online at hamstation.com. Ham Station carries all the major brands like Icom, Yezu, and Kenwood. Shop from a wide selection of radio scanners, MFJ accessories, Heil Sound products, Mirage and Ameritron amplifiers, Cushcraft antennas, and more. Easy online shopping and fast shipping are waiting for you at hamstation.com or call 1-800-729-4373. The Ham Station, proud to sponsor this episode of Ham Talk Live. The early bird may get the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. You're listening to Ham Talk Live with Neil Rapp. Join the conversation. Call us on voice with Skype at Ham Talk Live or give us a call at 812-NET-HAM-1. That's 812-638-4261. Now, here's more Ham Talk Live. Welcome back to Ham Talk Live. The Ham Station has you covered for both new and used equipment. Give Dan or Jeff a call at 800-729-4373 or go to hamstation.com. Tell them you heard it here on Ham Talk Live. And be sure to listen to the show every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time at hamtalklive.com. Make sure you check out our Facebook page and our Twitter feed. Just search 
for Ham Talk Live. Well, it's time for your calls. If you have a question for Lou about uh, school clubs or school club roundup, give him a call. It's 812-NET-HAM-1. That's 812-638-4261. Um, if you're a Skype person, you can call us on Skype at Ham Talk Live. Uh, you can also tweet any uh, questions that you have at Ham Talk Live, or you can post in the comments. Again, the phone number uh, is 812-NET-HAM-1. So, uh, Lou, welcome back. And... Um, want to talk a little bit about um, Limark and their support while we're waiting uh, for some calls. Again, that number, 812-NET-HAM-1. Give us a call, and we'll talk here uh, while we're waiting on people to, to do that. Um, talk a little bit about Limark and how uh, Limark has supported this event. Well, uh, Marty and I were doing this for a long time. Uh, I was doing it uh, with the kids at Brooklyn Tech, helping to do the scoring, and uh, this is all almost all before computer logging. Uh, people would send in stacks of paper, and uh, after I retired, I realized that, and especially after Marty passed, uh, we weren't going to go on forever. And I wanted to try to get uh, uh, the event to continue. And uh, I brought it to uh, the Limark Board of Directors and proposed that they pick it up as sponsoring. And so we formed a committee. They adopted it, and we formed a committee. Um, mainly, uh, I have a friend who's a computer person, uh, Ken, WB2KWC, who helps a great deal with uh, the anomalies and the the uh, logs and things like that, and we we're looking to expand the committee within the club. But uh, Limark just celebrated its fiftieth year, um, and um, right now we're somewhere around four hundred members on Long Island. Wow, very good, very good. Well, we do have. Um couple of uh, questions coming in here on Twitter. Um, first of all, um, KG0UFO wants to know how many schools are involved. Um, I've talked, it says, I've talked with some SCR schools uh, whenever I hear them on the air and got QSL cards from some. So about how many schools are involved? And I'm going to go ahead and answer this call too. So... Uh, on the phone, stand by there, and um, go ahead and answer that one, and then we'll we'll move on to the call. Uh, it's actually a little bit hard to say. Um, typically, uh, we will see uh, 60, 70 uh, clubs, uh, but um, what I know is that there are definitely more of them out there, just like in any other operating event, uh, there are people who will make contact and uh, will not send in a log. Uh, and I make a point of asking for every log. I don't care if you made a single contact. We'd like to hear from you. Uh, and we've had a few of those. So, um, and, and one thing I wanted to mention about logging, if I, if I may, uh, Neil, um, there's been a tremendous transition to computer logging, uh, and we have uh, two logging programs that have been created specially for School Club Roundup. Uh, one is by uh, uh, Scott and 3 fjp uh, and I believe it's Windows only. Uh, and then we have from uh, Dave, AD8B, uh, SCR Log, and he's been supporting us for quite a few years. Uh, and uh, SCR log is available for both Windows and uh, Mac OS. Uh, but anything will work. Whatever logging program or paper uh, is welcome. Um, generally, uh, if it's paper, we like it to be not more than 100 contacts, but your choice. Yeah, SCR log is, uh, has bailed us out many, many times, so thanks, Dave. 
And uh, Sterling Coffee in Zero SSC is on the line. Good evening, Sterling. Uh, thank hey. you for waiting so patiently. No problem. Evening, Neil. Hello, Lou. I just want to call in and say, uh, just give Lou a big thanks. Um, I'm the former president of a college club at the University of Missouri at Rolla, or it's now called Missouri S&T, as some might know. And their call sign is Whiskey Zero Triple Echo. And School Club Roundup was always a big staple for us and a lot of college clubs and always, always helped us get um, huge numbers uh, interested and involved and participating and doing all this on the air thing. At the same time, we did things like, you know, little mini field days um, and took the whole week uh, out of the out of the semester to really promote ham radio in college and colleges and you know schools around the area. So that was always a lot of fun. Lately, I've been trying to work on, since I graduated, I'm you know, no longer in college, obviously, so I have a little more time to kind of devote to um, promoting ham radio in uh, educate, like colleges and schools and, and to youth in general. So lately, I've been working on a, a big database of, of colleges, like a mailing list, to, so to speak, so that we can go out and distribute this you know, big school club roundup, go do this, or you know, sweepstakes has a school club category, the November sweepstakes as well. So... I don't know if you guys want any like help because we have a few ideas maybe to um, uh, improve the contest uh, or not contest improve school club roundup um, and help promote it too because I always see like after the fact sometimes there's somebody like oh school club roundup was last week dang missed it so anything you guys need to help I'm willing. Well, Go thank ahead, you, thank you for your uh, comments and uh, appreciate it. It's always nice to have positive feedback. Mm -hmm. um, the um, yeah, it, it really uh, has surprised me how much uh, publicity and promotion it has received, especially in recent years. Uh, AWRL has uh, really featured it. Uh, uh, Ward, uh, uh, blanking out on his call Silver. sign. And, Thank you. Ward Silver has has put together a a plan uh, or a, a goal of having a school related activity each month, and uh, School Club Roundup is two of those. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course, the school uh, category in the uh, November sweepstakes, which has always been before School Club Roundup, that was always my favorite activity. Right. Yeah, same. It was a big capstone for us for the year. He actually helped us get um, one year. We we participated in C we, CW sweepstakes and Ward Silver in Zero AX was his call. He won us. I like he won us first place. <laughs> so it was a it was a big help to the the Triple E the dit dit dit. Um, but man, he was a huge help. So that's really good to hear that he's on it. Thanks so much, Sterling, for giving us a call. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, take care. 812 Net Ham 1 is the phone number, or you can Skype at Ham Talk Live. Uh, let's go to our other um, tweet here. Um, Dr. Scott Wright, K0MD, says, uh, Great show, and uh, wants to know what the best way to have students work in pairs uh, is during SCR, and what's the best thing that adults can do working in schools in SCR to encourage the students to be more active? I'll take the easy one first. They're working in pairs. Uh, one operates, one logs. Uh, that's sort of an obvious one uh, to me. Uh, very often I'll have uh, more kids in the shack than, uh, than two, and the additional thing I do is I hand out paper logs uh, and I ask everyone to practice logging uh, because the listening skills are uh, most important, uh, whether on phone or, or CW. Of course, the digital modes, uh, most of us are not listening, uh, but all three uh, work out. Uh, the, what I have found in terms of getting um, kids excited or within school and stuff like that, um, is to be an example. Uh, when I was actively teaching, it was easier for me to get the kids going because I would talk about it 
when I could in class. And many of my students would come disproportionately to the overall school. So um, if you are not directly in school and you have a friend who's teaching or something like that, we've had building custodians who, who are advisors to clubs, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, anything works. And uh, one thing that we found years ago, uh, I, I happen to like digital um, and we got feedback that said digital is too much like texting. They like phone. Other places say, hey, the CW is great. Uh, others prefer the digital. Everybody's got their own thing, and that's one of the greatest things about ham radio anyway. And that's one of the things that I've noticed um, is that some years – uh, my group is all about doing digital. They want to get on PSK 31. They want to run the macros. They want to do everything on there. And then I have other groups that they don't want to do that. They want to get on the microphone. They want to get on there and talk. And so we, we vary a lot on that from year to year, uh, just depending on the group of kids we have. You know, I think it's a, a great uh, chance to offer both. And, um, and that's uh, definitely a possibility with School Club Roundup. Well, why don't uh, – we've just got a couple of minutes left. So, Lou, why don't you uh, remind everybody again about the, um, the times and the dates um, and uh, get everybody uh, making contacts that week with schools – and then uh, the addresses again in case uh, there's a school out there that wants to sign up and get going, uh, how they can do that. Okay. Uh, I'll repeal first of all the uh, scr-l uh, at yahoogroups.com. Uh, that's uh, the longest running and, and most active discussion groups, uh, group for this. Uh, and if you want a direct question here, it's uh, scr at limark.org. Uh, the uh, and of course the AWRL website uh, has full listing of the rules and uh, times and all of that. This uh, this October session is going to run uh, from Monday the seventeenth of October through Friday the twenty first, and it starts um, off the top of my head. I really don't have it in front of me. Uh, I think in daylight saving time it's. Uh, uh, eight o'clock Eastern and goes through um, uh, eight o'clock uh, p.m. Uh, on Friday. Uh, you know, it's twenty-three fifty-nine uh, Friday uh, UTC, and uh, it is uh, what thirteen hundred uh, UTC uh, on Monday morning. Um, and you do not have to sign up in advance. You don't have to do anything like that. Just get on the air and have some fun. Okay. And there are recommended frequencies. Uh, those are posted up there, too, so you can know where the schools are more likely to be. It doesn't guarantee they'll be within those regions, but uh, they're more likely to be there. So get on the air and work some of these schools and uh, give them some contacts during School Club Roundup. Great way to... Show off uh, amateur radio in a school, and then uh, maybe you take it further and, and you know do some more um, work with the kids and get them going into a club and, and maybe even do a little contesting. So, Lou, thanks so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it, and look forward to talking to you on School Club Roundup here in a couple of weeks. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, that is a wrap for this week's edition of Ham Talk Live. I'd like to thank my guest, Lou Malchick, into RQ, and everyone out there in cyberspace for listening and calling in, and invite you back next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time when Marty Soloway, KC1CWF, Chicken with Fries, will be here uh, to talk about setting up a remote station. So for a list of all of our upcoming guests, be sure to visit hamtalklive.com. So for now, this is Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, saying 7375, and may the good DX be yours.